I'm happy. <laughs> A wonderful morning to my beautiful nurses. How have we all been? I'm very happy. I'm very happy, guys. I'm really happy. I got a lot of messages. Thanks for your help I raised. Thanks for your help I passed. In fact, sometimes I don't even understand the English anymore. I ate, I passed. Oh, my word. Nurses are really very brilliant. Nurses are intelligent people. I'm super proud of all of you. Gosh, you know, when I get those emails, when I get those messages, I open my Facebook, I go on any social media and those where I have one or two nurses who took their OSCE exam. It's all about success story. And I like to tell you, I share in your success story. I celebrate with you all and I'm super proud of you. Thanks so much. And I want to beg every one of us who has the privilege to watch my videos, please share these videos with your colleagues, share this video with your friends. I had somebody who had Braden Risk Assessment too and she was like, if I had found your video, you know i'm like let's share it to help people it's not all about making fame or it's just to help people and you know and i said so i'm happy to help you let's just face time and i'm happy to help you i'm really very touched with your story and she said to me i've watched your video and i've gotten what i need to get you know please if you have any medium any friend preparing for all skiers and you feel they need help please share this video with them and let every one of us pass on our first attempts that's how it's it makes me happy i passed that first attempt and i'm super excited and i like to tell you if you're preparing for your all ski exam get ready get ready to send me a message and an email for me to congratulate you because i definitely will the pass rate is really very high the success rate is really very high so guys today i'm actually going to be talking about frequently used drugs and i want to encourage you to watch this video to the end because i'm going to be bringing out some salient points now before i tell you some frequently used drugs i'd like you to know that as you're preparing for your oski exam my fellow lovely and wonderful nurses you are not trained to administer a cd medication remember you've not gotten your feed so you're not trained to administer a cd medication so if you get a cd medication for those who are not privileged to you know work in a clinical setting here in the uk before they take their oski exam when we talk about a cd medication we're talking about a controlled drug and a controlled drug is usually administered by two trained personnel two trained personnel one has to check and the other one has to counter sign so you cannot you've not been trained to administer a cd medications now some persons may also ask what are those cd medications we have oramorph as a cd medication we have morphine sulfate as a cd injection we have ozicodone as a cd injection uh, as a cd medication sorry cd medications we have tramadol as a cd medication so my fellow wonderful nurses you are not allowed to administer this cd medications if it happens which is rare if it happens in your oski exam that you happen to have oramorf you happen to have ozicodone you happen to have um, a morphine sulfate injection you happen to have a moramorph you happen to have any of the cd medication please code it Somebody will now ask, what are the codes to be given? If you have a CD medication, code it. The best code to be given is two. And we all know what is two for our OSCE exam. Two is meant in your OSCE exam is omitted for clinical reason. And if you omit a drug for clinical reason, turn to the back and write the dates, write the time, write the drug you omitted write the reason why you omitted the drug write your name and write your word signature a lot of persons write omitted for clinical reason and you don't go to the back of the charts where it's written drugs not administer to write the reason why you didn't administer the drug it's most likely in fact it's not most likely it's going to be a fail if you don't administer the medication they are happy for you not to administer any medication you are not happy with turn to the back write the dates write the time write the drug that was not administered write the reason why you didn't administer the drug write your name and write your words and write your signature i hope that is cleared now another thing i like to say is if you are unsure of any medication probably you've been given the jersey and maybe you've been given a very high dose and in your mind as a nurse you are not happy to give the medication 
write the reason why you are not happy to give the medication code it so code it you're not happy to give the medication code it and somebody will say what code did you give what code do, do you code it or what code is allowed for you to use you can use a code of two and like i said to you two means omitted for clinical reason another code a lot of people like to like what about code six i like to let you know that code six means illegible incomplete prescription or wrongly prescribed medication so if you are using a code of six it means you are sure the prescription is not correct do you know what i mean that means illegible incomplete or wrongly prescribed medication so if you're sure the medication is wrongly prescribed you can put a code of six but if you are not sure you know you are not sure you don't understand the medication you put a code of two omitted for clinical reason we double check with the doctor that's all really really what really really simple and as you're coding the drug remember to go to the back write the date write the time write the reason why the medication is not administered and endeavor to what endeavor to sign so now guys back to our video frequently administered medication you must know this medication before you take your oski exam a very most you must know them and the first one i like to tell you is ozibutinine ex i could spell it if you want is o x y b u t u n i n please i beg you take note of this medication is a very frequently used medication ozibutinin and what is this medication actually used for it is actually used to treat what overactive bladder overactive bladder a condition where the bladder muscles what contract uncontrollably you see the bladder muscles contracting uncontrollably you see the patient not able to control how he or she urinates so then you administer the medication called ozibutinin you don't need to speak big english if you are privileged to have this medication in your oski exam and you you how um, I'll be giving you ozibutinin. Ozibutinin is actually used to control the active bladder. It's all right, simple and what and sealed. Another medication I like you to know of is what calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is a supplement. It's actually given for strong bones, for muscles, and it can also be used towards to relieve heart bond. So calcium carbonate, this medication is very, very, very common. So take note of it. It's a supplement. Probably the person is having low calcium or the person needs calcium to build the bones, to build the muscles and for the heart as well. So you don't need plenty of stories too. Because if you say too many things, your time is going. So say the needful, say the important. Oh, sorry, I'll be administering to you calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is actually used for strong bones and for muscles. And also if you have low calcium, it's all right. And it's simple like that. Another medication I want you to know about is the proton pump inhibitors. Proton pump inhibitors. And you know them. We have omeprazole and we have what? Lansoprazole. They are actually used to prevent stomach and intestinal what? ulcers. So if you have lansoprazole or omeprazole, oh, sorry, I'll be giving you omeprazole. Do you know what it is? I'm just going to tell you, okay? Omeprazole or lansoprazole, they're actually used to treat intestinal or gastrointestinal ulcer. Is that all right? And is that what simple? Is it that used to treat or what? Or prevent stomach ulcer, intestinal ulcer, or what? Or gastroesophageal reflux is that simple you don't have to really say too much just have an insight okay and a lot of people will say what are the side effects listen for the sake of your oski exam immediately you tell the patient oh omeprazole lasoprazole is actually used to treat or prevent intestinal gastric ulcer gastro for uh, also pharyngeal reflux and some of the side effects you could have is nausea vomiting stomach ache all drugs all drugs i know there are peculiar side effects attached to each drug but for the purpose of the oski exam the side effects of all medication could be nausea vomiting abdominal pain and that's enough that is what that is enough all right so another drug i want you to know about is what we call anti-hyperglycemic drug and i would like you to know about metformin and glycoside metformin and glycoside these medications are all used to treat what 
type 2 diabetes so they are used to treat type 2 diabetes and they lower your blood glucose hello honey so i'll be giving you metformin or i'll be giving you glycoside so this medication is actually used you know to help you lower your blood glucose or to treat type 2 diabetes simple keep it simple keep it short and keep it what and keep it smart and more than the sky is your limit as regards this oski exam another medication i want you to know is the analgesic this analgesic i'm mentioning take note of them we have codeine we have paracetamol we have ibuprofen we have aspirin all of these are used to treat pains they are used to treat headache they are used to treat fever i know some persons will say about aspirin as a kind of you know blood thinning effects it can also be used to treat anti-inflammatory yes accepted it has you know it has blood thinning effects it has anti-inflammatory effects as well so that's all about the analgesic you used to treat pain you used to treat fever you used to treat headache just try as much as possible to keep it well to keep it very simple now another medications i want you to take note of in your exki exam is anti-hypertensive lota Lotasium, potassium, very important. Ramipri, very important. Amlodipine, very important. And lysinopri. Guys, you must take note of this for medication. Ramipri, amlodipine, lysinopri, and losatum was potassium. They are all used to treat high blood pressure, prevent stroke, and heart attack. So if you are privileged to have amlodipine, lysinopri, lotasium, potassium, you're privileged to have lysinopri, they are all used to treat high blood pressure, prevent stroke, and prevent what? Heart attack. Keep it cheap, simple, smart, you know, because you don't have to use big gram. Obviously, you are talking to what? You're talking to the patient. And the next one I want you to know about is anti-arrhythmic drugs. Now, give them to me. Anti-arrhythmic drug. You know, we have bisoprolol, we have a tenolol, we have digocin. And remember, digocin is a cardiac glycoside. You don't need to tell the patient digocin is a cardiac glycoside. No, you just need to tell the patient what they do. So, anti-arrhythmic drug generally, they are used to do what? They are used to treat heart rims. They are used to treat high blood pressure. So, simple and what and short. And when you are giving anti-arrhythmic drug like bisoprolol. You have to know the heart rate. You have to know the blood pressure. If you are giving anti-hyperglycemic drug, you have a hyperglycemic drug. You have to know the blood glucose because that helps you to navigate. If you have a blood glucose that tell you the blood glucose is three, of course you know you cannot you cannot give that medication because the patient blood glucose is low. And if you are giving anti-hypertensive and you ask the patient what's your blood pressure, and the patient is telling you my blood pressure is eighty over fifty, ninety over fifty, of course you know you have to omit that medication. Yes, here in the UK, 100 over 50, 90 over 50, they consider it as a low blood pressure. So you have to omit for clinical reason. I like and write, you're going to double check with the doctor. Nobody will fail you for that reason. I tell you the gospel truth. All right, guys. So make sure if you are given any hypertensive, check for blood pressure. You are given hyperglycemic drug, check for blood glucose. You are given antiarrhythmic drug, endeavor to check the heart rate and check the word blood pressure. Now, antibiotics. <laughs> Oh my word am i too fast i'm so sorry guys i'm used to talking fast so let's go to antibiotics i want you to take note of this special antibiotics nitrofurantoin it really comes out especially if you're having like phq9 or more you get it nitrofurantoin coamoziclav amozicillin and clerithromycin guys take note of this four antibiotics i mentioned them again nitrofurantoin Co-amoziclav, clerithromycin, and amoxicillin. Take note of them and be careful to also check for allergy because a lot of times when you have coamoziclav, the patient is allergic towards penicillin. So check for allergy. And what are these antibiotics used for? They are used to treat and prevent what infection. Keep it smart and what and simple. And what about diuretics? We have some diuretic medication. We have furosemide, we have spironilatone, we have bentroflumetazide. So all these medications I've mentioned are under what diuretics. I mentioned them again. For diuretics medication, we have furosemide, we have bentroflumetazide, and we have what spironilatone. You know, furosemide is used to treat edema and what and blood pressure. So if you're giving furosemide in exam, you also have to ask the blood pressure. Spironilatone is also used to treat heart failure, 
is used to treat edema and is used to treat hypokalemia. You don't need to mention all of them. Just say, oh, sorry, I'll be giving you spironilatone. This drug is still valid. It's within date. The doctor's signature is there. His blip number is there. I'm happy to administer this medication. Sweetheart, you know what spironilatone is used for? It's actually used to treat heart failure and hypokalemia. It's all right. And some of the side effects you're going to be having when you have this medication is nausea and vomiting. It's all right. Bless you. And that's all. And another one I want you to know is anti-emetics. For anti-emetics medication, these two are very popular. On dasterone and cyclizine. On dasterone and cyclizine. Just tell the patient, these are used to treat anti-sickness. Nausea, vomiting, all right? And the side effects you could have is nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. And that's it. And finally, supplements. There are lots of supplements medication you might have in your own case. I'm taking note of this medication and I mean it. Ferrous sulfates. Ferrous fumarates, levotyrosine, thiamine. I say it again. Ferrous sulfate, ferrous fumarates, levotyrosine, thiamine. So ferrous sulfate is used to prevent what? Iron deficiency. Used to prevent what? Iron deficiency. Ferrous fumarate is also used to treat and prevent what? Iron deficiency what? Anemia. And you know level tyrosine is actually used to treat what? An underactive thyroid gland. Keep it smart, simple, and easy for the patient to understand. So level tyrosine is used to treat what? Underactive what? Thyroid gland. And we have thiamine. Thiamine is used to treat what? Vitamin B1 deficiency. Thiamine is used to treat vitamin B1 deficiency. Guys, keep it simple, keep it short, and keep it smart. And the next one and the final one for all the drugs I want you to know before you take your OSK is I'm a steroid. And the steroid you must know is what is predisolone. Predisolone is what is used to treat allergy disorder or what or inflammation. Oh, predisolone is actually an anti-inflammatory. It's just gonna treat any inflammation, just gonna treat inflammation. Is that all right? Just keep it simple and what and smart, guys. This medication. I have listed is a must, a must. You must know them before you all scare. Uh, you must have an idea. I know you already have an idea of this medication, but just take note of them, memorize them, and endeavor to code anyone you don't understand. You're not sure of it, endeavor to code. And remember, you're not licensed to administer what a CD word medication. Now, if you're doing your implementation, guys, don't rush. Don't rush. A lot of time you see a medication you don't know, like ozibutinin, you see it in your exam and you've never come across it. I've said it in this video, for those who may not be opportune to watch this video before the exam and you see that drug, guys, there is a BNF on the table. Don't be like anxious, oh my god, I failed. No way, no failure. I'm telling you, Oski is really simple. If I bring out, if I open my laptop now and show you over 40 messages of success rates this week i didn't even teach them one-on-one -on -one. it's just watching my videos and they come to let me know the past they send me messages even some who have passed call me once in a while and send me a message I say, are you right it's been long i saw your video upload i'm like oh my god you've passed if i show you the success rate so guys i want you to calm your nerve down the success rate is just too high just do the needful practice explore read about this medication and if you have friends who are preparing for all skills i'm send them videos to help them and that's it all right guys even a lot of people who never had anybody preparing them for all skills and i have five this week just my videos they even contacted me can you help me with this i'm unable to respond sometimes because of work and yet they still passed so guys i can't wait to congratulate you keep watching endeavor to leave a comment for me i really like reading comments and as much as possible i try to respond to comments as well so leave a comment for me any question you don't understand pop it there and i'll be happy to answer you i'll see you in my next video next week and until then keep passing your oski exam bye guys love you all